Hey, this is Ariel. So I had a student in a lesson today, online lesson, who was asking questions about the five seven chord. And I tried to explain it, but I didn't couldn't get the right angles. Obviously, I'm not tech savvy. So I decided to try this again. And maybe if I recorded it, I figured out how to arrange the camera so that I could get the keyboard right. And then hopefully this will work and actually you can understand what a five seven chord is. And for anyone out there who's maybe new to the piano and is wondering how chords work or how they work with pieces, this can be helpful for you as well. So I'm going to start by flipping this camera around and you're gonna see the keyboard. We're gonna start with a C major scale because usually when you start playing the piano, that's the very first scale that you'll learn, probably a five finger warm up, but then C major. So with a C major scale, every note gets a number that goes with it. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one. Now, if we build a chord off of every single number, so let's say this is number one, so our C chord is built up, of, built up of thirds, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's our one chord. Then we can start, move up to two, D minor chord, two, and then three, four, five. Now our five chord, if we add an F on top, that is our five, seven. So pianists decided years ago that it's not the easiest thing to play a five, seven like this. By the way, the reason why this is seven is because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven above the G. So they decided let's rearrange these notes in a way that's a little bit easier. So if you bring these, this F down an octave, bring the D down an octave, bring the B down an octave, that's a lot easier to fit in your hand for pianists. Now, another thing they decided was to leave out this D. So a lot of times when you play a five seven chord, usually you'll play it with your left hand and you'll have a B F, G, or G7, and that's how it will work. If you add the D, it sounds great, but you can still figure out the chord like without the D, so it's not necessarily a key member of the chord, let's say. So I'm gonna add this in a song, and I'm gonna block the chords, and maybe you can figure out how it kind of works, and you can hear the difference of what it sounds like when you actually have a five seven chord in a song and you go from one the one chord to maybe a four and then to your five chord so i'm going to start with let's say twinkle twinkle little star well here we'll have uh we'll start with one i'll just block the chords right now one this is four which i didn't really talk about but then we go back to one then we have our five seven back to one five seven one now, a lot of times pianists will do a little something for variety. So they'll keep the same notes of the chord and they'll just break it up a bit. So let's try this. That's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. For people, let's say, who are playing for church, a lot of church music will use these chords. One, four, five, one, five, seven, one. So let's take a simple song, Jesus Loves Me. And for this one, I'll block the chords as well. One, five, one, then we have four. Back to one, five, one. And then we can add a little variety. with that if you're just improvising a lot of times people or pianists will maybe have octaves in the left hand and then jump up to the chord or they'll do um, chords in the right hand sometimes they'll do an arpeggio some it's just a lot of variety that you can do but once you learn the main chord and you know what the notes are then you can just go from there and add a lot of extra stuff so 
I hope this was helpful.